Hello and welcome, I'm Omnus and today we will react to the top 10. Um, how is the title again? The, the, the cringiest, the, the most awkward lyrics in British history or something. Uh, can I can't really find it at the moment. Uh, British uh, cringe or something. No, then I got hated. Um, Lyric. Yeah, stupidest lyrics in British music. There we go. Uh, Ed Sheeran and Shrek for some reason are the terminals, so they probably mean. Um, I want to say Smash Mouth, but they're American, so. I uh, don't really listen to the lyrics. You know, it's probably like retarded as X and Ben, so. Like, what the fuck if I care. So we're just gonna react to the list, enjoy, and we'll see what's on there. I just don't really have a request, so... Uh... It's Poetry Devotion. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK. Might be a good tune on there, but probably not. Top 10 stupidest lyrics in British music. Duran Duran. You're as stupid as, as a nuclear war. Okay. That's pretty stupid. For this list, we've loaded up the jukebox with four champagne players, supernova metaphors for a tuneful takedown. Uh, walking down a walking down the hall, uh, faster than a cannonball or something like. That's a pretty dumb lyric right there, but I would It's not all-time worthy, I guess, or top ten worthy. Those are just like throwaway, don't give a shit. Like it helps with the music, so why argue with it, right? Oh, there's like club music or something. Number 10, so many lyrics. Let's get ready to rumble by PJ Duncan. What the fuck is this? Messrs. Ant and Deck have clearly moved on from their days as Britain's... They look like the retarded brothers of the Beastie Boys. But Let's Get Ready to Rumble still stands as a mid-90s anthem. A song stacked with cheesy rhymes and awkward dance moves, there is a certain irony to a lot of these lines. Like the blue kid looks like he's on a chemo therapy or something, or well, maybe not that, but he looks like the nerd that gets all the wedgies. Like he's not a rapper. This colossal claim is and this four is gigantic. Look at that haircut, that's like a midlife crisis daddy haircut. Like fucking hell. And that other guy looks like a McDonald's employee, so not really that much better. Didn't even hear the lyrics, like who the fuck cares? Uh, I believe it's like One Direction. One of the, the One Direction members, I don't care. Liam Payne. It's a pain to listening to Liam, but sure. When the One Direction boys flew their boy band nest, it was all eyes on what each would achieve next. And in terms of dodgy lyrics, Niall got sweaty. I hate this song. And Harry got racy. Like him uh, fucking showering or something and showing his back. That's the cover, like... Were you on a time schedule or something, or were you on a deadline? Oh, fucking hell, man. But well, Liam wins with this underwhelming throwback to the group he's apparently trying to forget. You know I used to be one dollar free. Because if he's so free of one day, please don't rap. Them in the middle of his debut solo single. Given that Liam's track also came after individual efforts from every other band member. Like all of those fucking members are just gonna fade away. Like who fucking cares? I've never heard of this. What the fuck? There's this elephant that just was standing there in a dark room, and suddenly, a, like a staircase comes down his belly, and the band comes out of it. Like, let alone retarded lyrics. The video is also retarded. And, and, and they just got a happy meal or something. Like, fuck. 
fucking hell. Short verses and a catchy chorus, it was a festival favourite in the early 2000s. Although this line left us guessing. Desperate to rhyme something. This is so generic. Like, you have some guitar riffs, you have some instrumentation going on, but. It's just all so incoherent and so boring and so lifeless. Somewhere else and leave the citrus fruits alone. That's probably the word, lifeless. Like they're jamming out but they're not doing anything and whenever the jamming out stops it just sounds like a lifeless, drapless after party that already stopped or something. Uh, is this Bon Iver? Number 7, I know you love Shrek. Wake me up by Ed Sheeran. <laughs> is that an actual lyric on In Shape of You, really? I never, you know, uh, there's a terrible lyric in there, which I'm actually surprised isn't made of this, but you know, uh, you were in my bed or something, and now my bed sheets smell like you. That, that is a terrible lyric right there. And you know, the fact that I had to listen to this shit for like a while, you know, before the song just fades away. And then the next atrocity comes by this fucking ginger bloke. Um, but I mean, I did not know that the lyric was in there. I know you love track. Oh, they show shape of you or something, but it says wake me up. So, oh, it's a different one. I should ink my skin. Yeah, that's a different one. I mean, all of his songs sound the same. As arguably one of the most influential songwriters in contemporary pop music, Ed Sheeran's usually. Did he just smell her hand? But what the fuck? Bit short with this unexpected reference to everybody's favorite early noughties ogre. I know you love Shrek, cause we watched it 12 times. In amongst... Oh my god. <laughs> I know you love Shrek because we watched it 12 times. Like, I know celebrities don't have to do a lot of stuff. I mean, he released a new record like every three years and it's basically the same shit. So he has a lot of free time probably besides the touring and all that, but... Watching 12 times Shrek with your girlfriend, like, what is the point? <laughs> Much took sentiment about bubble bath and walks on the beach. The nod to Shrek is almost cute and original. No. Well, not quite. It's not like an onion. It's it just bad. The layers, it's just silly. Maybe I fell in love when you woke me up. Number six, five, whatever. Like no. a plate tectonic. I said it good, then I fucked it up, so well. Oh my god. Always stick with your with your first answer. And the lead singer looks like a lesbian. Reissued in 2005 and reworked by Mark Ronson in 2007. This record was a in the mid 2000s. And its success. Or can Mark Rolls just fuck off? Ricky Wilson spouts this gibberish four lines in. They're playing on kids' play 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 instruments, play like not even real ones, best just best plastic. Grossly overblown and grammatically a mixed mangling of basic scientific terms. Still, the second verse ends with a delightful dig on dentistry, so it's not all bad. For the majority, it is though. Number five, Jules was never my scene. Bicycle race by Queen. Yeah, there's a line in there from I don't like Star Wars, and Jules was never my scene. But that's a movie though, so that's not really a correct lyric. But I wouldn't really put it on the list. Of British rock music, Queen typically served up stellar lyrics, incomparable vocals, and iconic instrumentals. But though Bicycle Race is a pretty popular track, it has most of us scratching our heads here. The basic premise is pretty simple. Say something, Freddie Mercury says something else. But does a random disliking of Jaws and Star Wars really follow on? Or was it just a clumsy attempt to crowbar in some pop culture references? You decide. I wouldn't really put it on the list, honestly, because Jaws was never my scene and I don't like Star Wars. Like, why was the Star Wars lineup on there? But I guess they had to choose one of the two. And, and I never really read the lyric, honestly. It, never, it, really, it didn't really catch my ear, so it's not really that bad of a lyric. It is kind of out of place though, but it's just, you know, Queen is just kind of trying to stir up kind of some controversy, like, oh, I don't like Jaws and I don't like Star Wars. You know, they're basically saying the same thing. I don't like those two movies. You know, the Queen. 
I like Jaws. I do like some Star Wars, so there we go. But they're just saying that for uh, for for controversy, for publicity standpoints. And I mean, it's just a great song, so shut the fuck up. It's kind of an out of place lyric, or whatever. Not top ten worthy. I mean, come on now. I mean, there's way more stupid shit on there. Number four, Am I Asleep? Wild by Jesse J. Like Jesse J is still a thing. Number four, Am I Asleep? Wild by Jesse J. With UK number ones including definitive pop hits like Bang Bang and Price Tag, Jesse J's back catalogue is rich with success. And after winning the Chinese reality show, singing. She hasn't really been relevant anymore since, well, the beginning of this decade, but whatever. Her worldwide popularity is clear, but her lyrics haven't always been crystal. This line from 2013's Wild, right okay, that's a dumb lyric. Uh, am I asleep? No, I'm alive. Uh, bitch, if you are asleep, you're still alive. Like, what? It doesn't make any sense, so yeah, that's a stupid ass lyric. Worst, with Jesse blurring all boundaries between living, breathing, death, and that time. Yes, it's not meant to be taken literally, but we actually do. I mean, it's pop bit. music, so come on now. Inside, every time she sings it. <laughs> Bad. Number three, I don't. There's probably like some, um, like a boy band or something. Number three, I couldn't live without my phone. If that were me, by Mel C. Where do they go? And what do they do? I mean, it was 2003. Like cells were barely a thing back then. Much like One Direction, when the Spice Girls split, every former member sought solo success. And Mel This C is a Spice Girl. Oh yeah. There are, there are some retarded lyrics uh, in the Spice Girls, so yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Fairly well at first, scoring back to back. If you wanna be my lover, you gotta get with my friends. Like I have to fuck your, I have to fuck your friends first before I can get get on with you. Fucking slut. To become one, like yeah, I see what you're doing, like slut girls. Fucking hell. Terrible voice. Um, yeah, and I know that like one. Dude with like a generic knife in his profile picture like last week like criticized me for overusing the word slut and being obsessed with sluts, which is not doesn't, doesn't really sound that bad to me, but I mean might as well be you know obsessed with that rather than you know the opposite. Um so yeah, I did kind of you know you know uh Calm it down because in that video, the '90s one, I just went crazy with the with the slug word. So yeah, I believe I just said it twice now, but I mean, come on, I just yeah, I did overuse it there, but I mean, that's just what they are. I mean, just listen to the lyrics, just look at their outfits, just look at them. If that were me, wasn't one of the best. They want to appeal to kids, but they do want to have kind of like this slutty look, so they can appeal to men too. They just want to grow as much money as possible. I, I'm just calling them out. I mean, come on. Now. Aiming to address issues relating to homelessness. Appeal to the kids or appeal to the to the adults. They don't appeal to both. Fuck no. Yeah, even more money, but pick one camp and stick with it. Yeah, just that 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 lyric alone, like. Phones weren't really that important back then, so it's this is just like a throwaway garbage lyric. I, you know, I thought there was more, but that's it. I mean, the song is bad, you know, in the first place, so nobody gives a shit. So there we go. I didn't want to say something else, but I forgot it. So yeah, just fuck the Spice Girls in the corner. Oh my, I did not think that this, that that's could get any worse. Like, I couldn't live without my phone, but you don't even have a home. Like, what does that have to do with anything? Like, I don't get a lyric, honestly. So, yeah, and I mean, her voice just sounds very monologue. Like, du, du, you know, how's she singing, too? Like, in that really annoying tone. Like, just sing naturally. Don't, she's, she sounds like she's filling it up. Like, she's... You know, like it's filler. It is, of course, but like she's milking the shit out of that length. It's probably like barely three minutes long. But how out of touch pop stars can be into this song. 
I mean, mate, if you've listened to everything else, but... Or, you know... Number two. Mm. Oh... Is this a steak, Dad? Two, I met a girl mm. somewhere else by razor light. It doesn't sound that bad so far. Indie rock bands usually aim for edgy and insightful lyrics. So what went wrong here? With razor light frontman Johnny Burrell writing the words for his pop rock crossover hit, he builds a boy meets girl story and wastes three whole lines explaining basic conversation. But this isn't hard hitting realism, it's just mind numbing rubbish, delivered with just enough pretentiousness to annoy us even more. It's no wonder he craves somewhere else after hearing this. Okay, that's pretty bad. <laughs> Yeah, this is basically like, oh, yeah, uh, like the plane chasing down the car. It wasn't Family Guy or something like a parody spoof. Uh, this might be number one. It's probably number one. Uh, but yeah, that last one. It's not like the stupidest lyrics ever, but it's just generic as fuck. Like if I met a girl, you're like, oh, we're gonna meet up, we're gonna do that. You know, just to just think of the most generic, the most bland. You know. Boy meets girl a story ever. That's basically the number two spot. I didn't recognize this. He had a parody, but what movie is this again? Or maybe this is, not, this is like a spoof on that movie. So. A piece of toast. Life by Desiree. Oh yeah, it's probably like like a like an homage. How was this called? Desiree. A piece of toast by Desiree. I just had a piece of toast. So that's pretty good. I'm so afraid of the dark, especially when I'm in the park. I mean, it's not even the lyric right there. That, that line is already fucking retarded. Uh, it rhymes, of course, so you, ha you have to throw it in there. Um, it does make sense, though. It does make sense in one way, you know, because there can be... There, uh, there might be a situation where something can happen in a dark park. That just sounds retarded, honestly. Uh, but, you know, it can happen. But the problem is that that is kind of like a, uh, you know, a dangerous, a kind of, um, you know, worrying situation. And the tone is, you know, it's really a beat, it's really happy sounding, so that just doesn't flow well. Or, you know, if only this was like a, like a happy sounding song with depressing lyrics, which you can kind of say, but it's just like... That line is only in there because it rhymes. I mean, you know it, I know it. It's just so fucking obvious. Some questionable words that rhyme can cause some questionable lyrical decisions. But none more so than this. Life was our offense that rhyme can cause some questionable lyrical decisions. But none more so than this. Life was R and B star Desiree. <sighs> oh yeah, I probably hate the line more like uh, something in life that I want the most. I want a piece of toast. Like these are just throwaway garbage lyrics. Like they don't make any sense towards the progression of the song. They're just in there because of the rhymes. That's the sole reason, and that's the worst kind of pop music. Okay. Oh yeah, I know this is song. It's pretty bad. The ghost toast most. Thankfully, the rest of the song is full on feel good, so at least everyone can smile about it. I would just put it off. Now she's driving away with two two black dudes. Have a great time, you dumb bitch. Fucking hell. They were they were already doing that hate generic shit and like in the early 2000s. Fuck that shit. Um, what is the next video? Because I do have 50 minutes left to record that one. Ooh, uh, the the most heated fuse. That is a good one. So I might take my time for that. Uh, you know, because my two my my favorites my Gallagher's are in the in the thumbnail so. 
it's relatively short though, so I'm probably gonna, you know, like rush that video because I still have like 15 minutes left. So I'm gonna end it now, so I do have still some time, 15 minutes on my camera, so there we go. Thanks for watching this video, and peace, like, and do all those things, and thank you.